Hey, this is Aaron. And this is Kristen. And this is Drive Mode Show. Yeah, you know what today is? Today sounds like a truck day. Yes, it is. It's truck day. <laughs> Let's talk about big trucks. Big. Yes, but not semi trucks, which are also called no. trucks. Uh, <laughs> we're talking heavy duties. The heaviest of the heavy duties, but in the luxury realm. That's the best of both worlds. I know. It was funny because somebody made a comment earlier on something that I was reading saying that, why are trucks getting so gargantuan, blah, blah, blah. I tried out a Ford Maverick and I didn't like the feeling of it compared to my Colorado. And I said, well, you just spelled it out <laughs> <laughs> because bigger is nicer. It's roomier. <laughs> Answered your own question, man. Yeah. So anyway, what we're going to specifically talk about is a Sierra from GMC. Yeah, that's a big, beautiful truck. It is. Uh, we both drove it. Um, I had it for about a week. You had it for about a week. Yep. And uh, I managed to load it with a whole bunch of rocks. And also a bunch of luggage to drive about, I don't know what it is, 200 miles, I think, um, hauling the family. And yeah, it was great. <clears throat> it's, it's a beautiful vehicle in the Denali trim, especially. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously your, your base models aren't going to be as cushy when you're talking about any GMC truck, but. The GMC Sierra HD, what is it? 2500 HD Denali. There's yeah. a lot of little words in the name. <laughs> it's got everything. My my son loved it. His friends loved it. My husband loved it. And even the valet loved it when I brought it to the airport to park it. He's like, <laughs> wow, nice truck. And I said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really loved it on a road trip. Um the family was, there was tons of room in there. I have three teenagers. Everybody was fine in the back seat. Uh, we had all of our luggage under a tarp in the, in the cargo area. Uh, and we just drove pretty much nonstop for that whole, that 200 miles. Um, and it was smooth and beauty. Uh, I had it with a 6.6 .6 diesel, which has a 10 speed uh, automatic transmission, which is, super smooth uh just a, a nice even wonderful drive i believe uh by base it comes with the gasoline engine i don't remember the size of that i think it's 6.2 is what i want to say but i don't remember i don't remember and i had the diesel as well okay and that's what you want if you're gonna if you're gonna tow or haul anything right because you need that low end torque yeah uh I just looked. The V8 is also a 6.6 .6 liter, but it only has a six-speed automatic. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, there's a uh, four-wheel drive and so on. <laughs> yeah, and that that ten-speed Allison transmission makes the difference when you're trying oh, yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a it like I said, it's it's super smooth on the shift, uh, and doesn't hesitate at all to downshift when you need a little more go. Um, so I had no issues there. The rocks we hauled, it looked like a lot um, until we loaded it in the truck. And then it looked like we had nothing in there. <laughs> Cause, cause the truck I was... remember that picture now. And you <laughs> yeah. were, these, are, these are rocks you're polishing? What did you no, do these, uh, these are landscaping rocks. Oh, and, okay. <laughs> uh, some friends of ours were are uh, redoing some of their backyard. They're going to get rid of their fire pit and change it. And they had this layer of rocks in this area, and they didn't want them anymore. So we shovel and wheelbarrowed them into the truck. And uh, as we were loading them, I was like, oh, this isn't that much. And then we put it in, the, and then I was like, oh, this is a lot as we were in the middle of it because it was, uh, and it was like 90 <laughs> degrees outside and whatever. And, oh, no. dying. And, uh, and once we loaded it in the truck, I was like, that's not that many rocks. Um by weight, though, it was uh, slightly under one ton. So it was a fair amount of rocks, but you would never know that this, this truck 
that that was like a third of its capability in terms of cargo. So it had no. <laughs> yeah, I interviewed the engineers about this truck and really focused on the incredible power and capability for towing. It tows, isn't it? Is it 18,000 pounds off the top of my head? I'm trying to remember, it's, but. It's a huge number. I think uh, 18 is number. actually not enough. I think it's more than that. Maybe um, 20. I can look it up really quick. I don't know, but it's it's an incredible amount of towing, and they test it extensively. So I think it's really interesting that they take it into the wind tunnel. They test it. They test it in, in a zillion ways to make sure that it can really hold up. You know, the strength of the components, the bed, all of the parts when it's carrying a heavy load. It's um, an interesting design too. When you look underneath it, um, the leaf springs are very thick and heavy like you would expect, but I didn't expect them to have such an acute angle. Uh, I, I was expecting them to be flatter uh, and they're a little, they're very acute, which is because they're made to compress under all that load. And I was looking at them when they're basically not loaded. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely the truck you want if you need to tow a large boat or a camper or a side-by-side -side with additional things on it it's 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 capable of doing just about anything you know plus you could put a gooseneck on there mm -hmm. um, you name it here where i live i see a lot of uh gooseneck trailers horse trailers mostly and uh they're always pulled behind big trucks like this uh and i see the Denali 2500 specifically doing a lot of um, like long distance uh, trailer pulling. So these are these are people that do rodeo, people that do um, that do a lot of cattle hauling, uh, moving cattle from from area to area, or making their the trades that they're all that ranchers are always doing. Where you know I'll give you this many head, you give me that, and or a bull or whatever they're after. So there's, you, I see a lot of that. And then now I'm seeing more and more of these trailers where it's a camper in the front and a horse trailer in the back. Um, I saw one the other day driving through Cheyenne here that was a camper on the front end, front end and he had, I think three, I, I counted three alpaca in the back. <laughs> alpaca, not white. <laughs> so probably, I'll pack it out, but they're they're for the county fair was happening, so I assume that's what it was about. But um, anyway, you were right on the towing. It's eighteen thousand five hundred is the max towing for this truck. Okay. Uh, the the ones that we were driving, I think it was more in the sixteen five or seventeen thousand range, because uh, when you get in the Denali package, you add a lot of weight with all of the luxury extras plus that uh, multi-pro tailgate and other things, um, all those things add weight. The more weight you put on the truck, the less it can pull. That's just how it works. Right. Right. And it's funny. I was thinking about, you know, we we're talking about the Denali trim. I cannot tell you how many people call GMC vehicles Denali's. They'd be like, oh, I took my Denali, you yeah. know, to Colorado or what like that. Well, what, what Denali? Was it a Yukon Denali? Was it a Sierra Denali? You know, which one was it? But it's become, it's such a big part of the GMC brand. I think more people buy the Denali trim than any of the others. So, I mean, it really is super nice. Well, when you're talking about the differences between a GMC truck and a Chevrolet truck, most of the differences are in interior fit and finish. There's design interest, uh, differences, of course, but for the most part, they're largely the same trucks in terms of basic configurations and what they come with. The real difference is that interior experience and then some of the body design, but by and large for most people, it's the interior that matters. And so if you're going to go to the GMC variant, you might as well go to the top one. <laughs> I agree. And it's it's a big truck in front. It has, uh, mm -hmm. it, it's very, has feels like very big dimensions where say um, the, the Tundra, feels a little bit more sculpted in the front. 
right. where the Sierra is like just a big block, you know, and it's difficult to park, but I can't complain because it's a big truck. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be big and capable and it's not, this is not a Prius, you know, you're not going to zip right. right into a, a parking space. Plus it's got all of the cameras, what is it, 14 camera views, transparent trailer. I mean, GMC has done a really good job of making this as safe and convenient as possible to drive, even though it is so large. Yes. Um, I had no issues um, driving it through Colorado, despite Colorado traffic and drivers. And um, I, where we were, where we were at when we were in Pueblo was in town and I had really no issues parking. Um, It gets close to the lines in some lots, but for the most part, it was fine. And uh, the hardest part really was just for uh, my kids, especially just getting in and out of it um, because it sits so high. Uh, and just for reference, uh, in case anybody is is uh, interested, there are five different trim levels for the GMC Sierra. Um, the Denali is the top one. So the base model, most people don't look at that. That's more of a work truck. You see a lot of those in fleet. And then after that, you have the other, the other three models uh, besides Denali. Um, and then like any pickup truck, you have two different cab configurations. There's a, a crew cab and double cab, which is basically a smaller crew cab. <laughs> and then uh, there's the shorter and longer bed lengths and a couple of engine options. You have either the gas or diesel. And so, and four by four or not. So it's like most trucks, it's very configurable. You can figure out what you're going to use it for, and then you can configure it for that. You can get it in single or dually. Um, you can get it with or without um a fifth wheel um gmc has a dealership fifth wheel that they will install uh gooseneck is there by default i believe um i think that's true across the board on all the heavy duties now uh and then uh bumper pull um the kit there will be is sized for the truck so used to be that you would buy a truck with the factory tow kit and it would only be a class three hitch um which is only rated to, uh, if I remember right, on class three, I think it's only uh, it's only rated to 5,500 pounds or something. Um, they've changed that. Now they're coming with low distributing uh, class five hitches. So you can pull the maximum uh, weight of the bumper pull, which is different than the maximum tow weight of the truck itself. So anyway, all those things. It comes with everything. Who do you, who do you think is the best market for this truck? Who's going to buy it? I think it's configurable enough that there's a large market for it. Um, Heavy duty trucks, you're already looking at people that are pulling large camper trailers, large trailers of some kind. Um, The regular everyday homeowner that just goes to Home Depot and, and Lowe's and stuff and does weekend projects and, and, hauls a regular sized boat probably doesn't really need this um a half ton truck will do all of that uh until you get into loads where your trailer is getting into the eight nine thousand plus range you really don't need a heavy duty truck um you could do it with a regular half ton uh, but a lot of people like the 2500 because you can take those heavier loads that you could do in a half ton truck and it just is it's easier it does it easier does it better you have no worries that you're ever going to be too heavy et cetera, et cetera. um and that's a good point when people buy I, trucks for what they want yeah, to do or think they right. can do and i know like personally if if i have the choice between having just enough and having too much i'll take too much every time um and that's true especially in towing, um, because I learned in trucking school, it's not about how much you can pull, it's about how much you can stop. And bigger the truck, better it will stop. <laughs> yeah, true. So That's a good point. I mean, I really enjoyed, I enjoyed having it. And um, mm-hmm. it seemed like people who were into trucks were really interested in it too. So yeah. I say good job. 
Good job, got, GMC. Got a lot of comments on it for sure. Um, and I didn't put it anywhere near its paces. Um, but I have I have taken a GMC in the past and pulled pretty heavy loads with them. Um, and they've always done a good job. So I see no reason why this wouldn't. <laughs> Agreed. So, there you go. We big truck. Truck, yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is Aaron. And this is Kristen. And this is Drive Mode Show. Thanks for joining us. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell. Run it over with your 2500 HD. <laughs> <laughs>